Welcome to the Postal Mate webinar, USPS Rate Change 2022 Mid-Year. And that's because the post office is doing rate changes twice a year at a minimum um, from this point forward. That's, that's a new thing they got. So January and July, expect a rate change. And my understanding is for the most part, January will be package services and mid-year July will be more first class, but it's not completely stuck to that as you'll see today. So moving right into this, we welcome you all. Here's our topics today. And I'm going to do something different in this webinar I've never done before. When you receive the email later today, and it'll be this after, late this afternoon, um, with the link for this to rewatch it, I'm going to try to timestamp in the email. I'll let you know the timestamps of certain instructions that you might want to come back to. Otherwise, there's going to be some points in this where you may want to pull out your camera and take pictures or take quick video if you don't want to go back and rewatch the webinar, because I'm going to give you some detailed instructions you may want. So that'll be in just, just a little while. So moving right along, Postal Mate version 12.6 is scheduled to be released later today. You do not have to run it right away. These rules take effect on Sunday. Um, so all your mail going out Monday will have, should have the new rates on it. Now I will tell you, um, the post office is fairly lenient in giving a day or two grace period if it has old rates on it. Um, so if your last mail pickup is Friday and you're closed Saturday, you may want to run the update manually on Friday night. Otherwise, most stores run it on Saturday or Saturday after their last mail pickup. Um, when you run the rate update, I want to share something with you that I saw it happening, um, and I think it's probably my fault that it's happened, is because we talk about setting rates over wholesale or over published, and it got people confused. So we added some new words on one of the rate on the quick rate setting utility screens. So when you when you do the rate update, the quick rate setting utility will pop up either at the time of the update or on Saturday. So if you if you do the update early, then this will pop up on Saturday. If you do it, wait until Saturday, it'll pop up same day. And this is the one of the screens. And it's very important that you be very careful here. So up here in the upper left, you can see that it says wholesale rates. And it's the radial dial here is apply discounts according. And that's where we want you to stay. When we pre-select a button here for you, it's on purpose. We're trying to give you a big hint that this is what most people want you want to select. Now it's not a hundred percent. Um, people are going to select that, but it is most people are going to select that. Set to publish rates. This is for your wholesale, not for what you're charging your customer. This is for wholesale. This is not your markup or your margins. This is your wholesale. You don't want this unless you are a university or a CPU or have some really unusual setup. You would not want to set your wholesale rates to published. Okay. So we added this is uncommon here to remind you to stay up here. Um, the next screen is um, the retail rates. Now that's what you're charging the public. And so again, we've had, the, we have color in the radial dial black here, and that's the one most people select. I would say that for well over 95% of you, this is the one you're going to want to use. And honestly, see down here where it says apply margins to wholesale, and you might be thinking, oh, but I apply my margins to re to uh, published. It doesn't matter. Um, for marking, for, for, rate increases it doesn't matter whether you select wholesale or um, published here because when you raise one it raises the other so don't worry about that but if you want to if you you can always drop that down and select published and run it that way it doesn't again it doesn't it won't make a difference but this will do things properly so just make sure that those two screens especially this first screen where it says this is uncommon stay away from that one uh, unless you are one of those really unusual stores that does something different, okay? So what's going on with the post office? Here's the rate increase this year. Um, first class letters and postcards, they're going up to 60 cents wholesale. Um, right now you get a five cent discount when you create online first class uh, letter postage. That discount is decreasing to three cents. Supposedly, that's because you have to buy the label and buy the machinery and uh, service with Indisha or whatever. It's to help with that. Well, uh, they're not helping as much as they were. <laughs> so um, over the years, for those of you who are newer, we've seen it go to three cents before. Um, 
and uh, it's you know it's been three cents five so i think it is even was two cents at one point so this is it's not uncommon to fluctuate and just because it's three cents now doesn't mean next year it won't jump back up to five cents so don't sweat this nobody's going to go broke over over two cents yes every penny adds up but it is what it is we have no control over it so we just swallow it um, the next thing is uh, to notice is it's only a three and three point four percent increase, which you know that's so that they can advertise that oh it's a very small increase. But look at that second ounce; it went from twenty to twenty four cents. That's a twenty percent increase, so that's a pretty big deal. Um, so your other increases are here, and then I just want to caution uh, before we get into the rates for those stores that are in the Annex Brands franchise, you do have kind of a one button setup as usual. If you have any questions on your rates, please contact your headquarters. We will be talking about setting your first class postage rates up both in Postal Mate, the shipping side, and Cash Mate. For those Annex Brands stores that use Annex Brands rates, you still have to do the Cash Mate side. So you're not excused from watching the next parts of the video or the webinar. Here we go. So you're going to, once you change your rates for first class, it it undoubtedly changes your stamp price to something you don't want. Um, it rarely is magic and works out perfect for you. So you're gonna manually go in and just change your first class stamp or your all your first class rates, but mostly just your first class stamp to whatever you want it to be. Um, again, there are two places to do that because you sell, sell stamps in two ways. You sell it on the shipping side where you create the postage either through a Dymo label stamp or on a full four by six or you sell a stamp over in Cashmate, maybe it's a stamp you have on a roller and a book in your drawer that you peel off and hand to the customer. So those are two separate setups in Postmate Cashmate, okay? So we have to change this into different places and we're gonna, and we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. Um, so get your cell phone ready in case you wanna take pictures or if you wanna watch the webinar later, that's fine. Here we go. Um, in Postmate, you're going to go to Tools, Postal Mate Settings, Set Shipping uh, set shipping Rates, and then select Weight-Based Services way over on the right, okay? And then you're gonna get to a screen like this and you're gonna drop them down so that it says USPS First Class Mail and you're gonna leave it on Retail Rates. And that's gonna bring up this tiny little chart over here. And you can see that the, the first one is, is already highlighted for you. It's dark blue. And for mine, it says 77 cents. Well, I don't want to charge 77 cents. Maybe I want to charge 75 cents. So what you do is just double click on that 77 and enter the value you want. Okay. Now, before you go on to the next item, you may want to change these others or leave them alone. That's up to you. Usually we don't care so much that there's odd numbers on the second, third, and four, or second, third, third, and a half <laughs> ounce. But that first ounce, we always seem to want that to be a round number because it's weird dealing with pennies, right? So 75 cents or whatever you, you 80 cents, whatever your magic number is, is fine there. I'm not saying you should be 75. It's whatever is right for you. And then be sure and click that save button and you're done. That's all there is to it. Now, close that, and then let's do the same type of thing over in CashMate. So in CashMate, you're either going to go to Find Product, which is down here in this lower right, or I always go up here to Edit, um, Edit Product. It gets you to the same place, so no worries there. And once you get there, you're going to find your single stamp. And by the way, um, you're gonna click edit. When you name your single stamp, be sure and name it. Don't have, a lot of people put in um, stamp 58 cents. And you, it's kind of redundant on the receipt, stamp 58 cents, and then you're charging 65 for it or 70 for it. That doesn't make sense, right? So don't put the value of the stamp in this full name price. Just call it a first class stamp. Um, so once we get to this point, then we're going to go up to the top where it says pricing. And on the pricing, um, you see clearly there's a retail price there. You're just going to, again, double click in it, enter the value you want, and you're done. Almost not quite, because we have one more thing we ought to do. We need to go up to buying an inventory. When you click on buying an inventory, there are two possible screens that will show up depending on your settings. And I'm gonna show you both of them. 
So one looks like this and the other looks like this. And it just, the difference is, have you made stamps exempt from key, your inventory? So if you have inventory on and you typically keep inventory on stamps. Now in my store, I used to keep inventory of stamps different from Postmate on a, on a spreadsheet that I had, because it's a little bit hard to manage to me in Postmate because there's all these different weird values and I want to keep track of all my stamps and what have you. So I used to keep, um, to have one person who says they can't hear me, can, please be sure, please let me know that you can hear me. Hello. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, so if you want to keep inventory and postmate and that's working for you, great. Um, I, I find stamps are easier to manage on a spreadsheet. So these are the same. It, it's just one is turned, it's exempt and one it's not. So don't worry about that. Right over here is where you're going to change that value. Again, just double click in there, enter the new value. And okay. Um, and so this is where you put your actual cost on this. So 60 cents would be the correct amount. And then click on those that OK button. And then that'll take you back to the fine product. Click OK again, and you're done. Um, so these are the instructions I will try to timestamp for you. Next topic of the day is something really new for us. So we've had cubic rate for priority mail for a couple of years now. And um, it used to be restricted to extremely high volume shippers. You had to ship over 50,000 packages a month by priority mail in order to qualify. Um, but a few years ago, they decided to count our, our weird little industry as a whole. And so we qualified that way as a whole. Well, um, they have since done away with the 50,000 um, qualifier. And now you only have to be a commercial shipper. So cubic rate is going to become more common. But here's what you need to know. First of all, it's not available at the post office. Number two, the general public has no clue what it is or what it does. So they've never been, they aren't able to use it and they don't know what it is. Number three, you can save a lot of money if you don't use it. That seems really like a weird statement, Karen. But trust me, that is a true statement if I've ever heard a true statement. So I promise you, I'm going to do a webinar. I'm hoping it'll be in August, depending on my, um, my schedule. But I'm going to do a full cubic rate webinar where I teach you how to make a boatload of money without ever selecting cubic rate. And that's the trick is do not select cubic rate priority and do not select the new cubic rate parcel select ground. Indicia will give you that lower rate as a cost if that package qualifies. So when we send the information to Indicia for a full label, we never tell Indicia how much money to put on that label, how much postage to purchase, never. We do not send any dollar amounts. All we send is the, the from, the to, the size, the weight, you know, those type of things. And then Indicia calculates the postage. Well, they look at your account and said, oh, this account has cubic rate. Yep, this box qualifies. Yep, it's $3 cheaper. We're gonna give them that cubic rate. Now, Postal Mate's never going to know that you got that lower discount. You'd have to actually reconcile your bills. But it is kind of magic in the background. You should never sell cubic rate to your public because this is a discount you should take advantage of. Um, it really is. I, I, with few exceptions, I will stand my ground on that. That's a hill I will die on for you. Um, this is, is one where you should, you should make the money. Um, okay, so what is what's the parameters for parcel select ground? Because for parcel for priority mail, it's a half cubic foot and 20 pounds, blah, blah, blah. So for parcel select pound, it's up to a full cubic foot. And that's a really big deal. So like a zone seven, 17 pound box is like almost just a, a little under or right around $16. So it's really quite cheap. Um, it's any weight up to 20 pounds is the same price. So one pound and 20 pounds in the package is the same price. So it's not weight based. It's, it only has a weight limit of 20 pounds, but it's not weight based. It has eight zones and 10 sizes. So every 10th of a cubic foot, it goes to the next level. So a cubic foot is, for those of you who are newer, a 12 by 12 by 12 box, but be very careful. The post office will use the outside dimensions and a 12 cube box is rarely measures a 12 cube box on the outside. 
So you may want to stock up on some, in fact, I would do this just, just for this program, I would order some 12 by 12 by 10 boxes to use in your store. That way you're comfortably within the one, one uh, the, the uh, cubic foot parameters, but you can take advantage of getting some of these lower prices. And then let's see here. Again, my recommendation to never select cubic rate for any service. The cubic rate prices, I know this is gonna show up really small on your screen, but again, let's go to that, um, that zone seven. If you had like 17 pounds or 20 pounds, because remember, it's the same, same rate for one pound as 20 pounds. It, uh, for an almost complete box, it's 1509, and for a, a full 12 cube box, it's, a, it's $16.10. Um, if you compare that to your FedEx and UPS rates, your wholesale on those should be right around, I'm going to say $25 residential. Um, so it's really a significant savings. If you can, you, you often have that customer that comes in and says, uh, and you say, well, how, what, when do you need to get the, get the package there? And then I don't care. Whenever is fine. No hurry. Slow boat to China. They think they're so clever. We've never heard that line. Um, <laughs> so this might be exactly what you want. And I don't recommend marking this up and charging $30 for this. No, if you charge $55 for that UPS and FedEx, then maybe this should be $53, right? So you're going to make a whole lot of money on it. So th that's just my kind of thought process. We will go into detail in the cubic rate webinar that we'll probably do next month. So, but this is the other news for Parcel Select Ground. It just got faster. The post office has indicated that the um, Parcel Select Ground was two to eight days and now is two to five days. So they've moved up the estimated delivery. Now, I, you can set your time in transit for post office manually as I've done over here in this example. Um, I did three to nine, even though they say, said, two to eight because I never quite believe it. And I'd always, I'd rather over, over to, uh, under, under promise and over deliver, right? And I always wanna make sure that I quote to the customer, it's not guaranteed to be there on that date because un, that is the disadvantage. It is a cheaper rate, but it's not guaranteed by that date. And we all know with post office, yep, it can get there, it, shoot, it can get there tomorrow. It can get there in two days. It, things happen and we've seen that and Wow, they're amazing. And we've seen things that we sent out and it hasn't gotten there for five weeks. Now, I don't suggest for a minute that this would not get there for five weeks. I mean, um, they clearly say it's two to five days. If it's five weeks, then something happened, something bad happened to it or in the, in the transit, it would be unusual. But I'm also not willing to let my customer think for a minute that the post office is guaranteed. I want them to send post office because I can probably make more money on it now with these rates but I will not mislead my customer on the time in transit. That would be foolish. So those of you who have, have your, set your time in transit and you've put in priority mail two to three days, you're doing yourself and your customer a disservice unless you, that's really the result you're, you're getting 100% of the time. So give yourself some cushion. At least tell them it's not guaranteed. Okay. Um, so you want to know, I know, you want to know, where do I get to, where do I put that in? Where, how do I do that? Okay, snapshot this with your camera. These are the instructions. I'm not going to go through and do it for you. Um, but these are the instructions for uh, where, how to edit the time in transit or enter your own time in transit. Okay. All right. Changing screens in three, two, one. Here we go. New addressing requirements. Many of you have received a nasty gram error message from Indicia recently um, that is saying that, oh, you have to have, and it's 64055 is the error message. The problem is 64055 is a generic error message. They use it for more than one thing. So we actually read, please read the whole message before you call us or email us and tell us what the issue is. Um, well, I can't tell you how many times we get a message, message that says, I got error 64055, what do I do? Well, there's about three or four or five different things it could be. So um, tell us a little bit more and then we'll be able to fire it back to you. But this is a first and last name. It's a, it's a two character thing. Basically, you can't have um, less than two characters uh, any, anywhere in a name, okay? So we're gonna go through some examples. And at the end of the webinar, I have more examples that we'll go through because this is a really important one and it will catch you 
um, it, it will catch every one of you at one time or another. So here's some examples. Well, first of all, let's look at this. This bottom one is the most common one we get. Um, when you're sending to a an APO, FPO, DPO, Private John S. Davidson, because you know it's a military, it's set up military style, and your your customer, mom, dad, grandma, whatever, is knows that they have to have that middle initial S in there. Well, Indicia won't give you a label with that, so you have to take that S out. Now you can, mind you, you can take a pen. There's nothing that says you can't take a pen and mark that S in. It, it will get there just fine without that S in there because you aren't the only one aren't, that everybody who creates online postage from any format at this point should not be able to have that S in there because it's a post office rule that made Indicia change. So um, it'll be universal. So the, the uh, military will not be necessarily expecting that S to be there. But if, if uh, the parent or you know, friend or whatever is having a heart attack because you took the S out, you can always manually write it in. So some other examples of uh, when it's going to catch you, how about first name, last name here, when you attention Miriam, but you don't have a last name, that that will that's a hard no. Um, you got to have a last name. Another example very similar to this um, is when you have the RMA number. Um, yeah, and that second second one is billed as blank. Can't do that. Um, here we go. Now here's the important thing. It's the customer not the ship to. It can be either or. It's not always the ship to address because remember with uh, Indicia, the return address on the label should be your customer. If you don't have it set up that way, you need to have it set up that way. It always should be your customer. And so customer information is sent also to Indicia. And if it has any blanks or single letters in it, it's gonna give a hiccup, okay? Um, Here's another one with a blank. And this was an actual one I copied from somebody I talked to, a store owner I talked to a couple of weeks ago, and they were actually forwarding mail for their box holder. And they have the employee that does the forwarding put, put their name in the first name there. Um, and then, so they just had Susan because she was doing the mail forwarding for, um, for, for this uh, particular customer. But indeed she had no last name there. So that was a problem. Again, that was the customer. Um, but also, there's one other weird place this can happen, and it's down here at the um, in your in your Postmate settings, and it has to do with your store information. Now, I just told you that we send the return address, the customer information, to Indicia, and that is a true statement. However, you should know that this information also goes and has to qualify. And for years and years and years and years and years and years and years, many stores, um, through our encouragement, have had have changed the contact name from their store owner's name, John Smith, to a great customer of. And then it says a great customer of Mail and More. And it's wonderful. It looks lovely. The problem is Indicia won't accept that A in there anymore. So in-store information. Where it says A, you have to take out A. And this isn't going to sound quite as good, but it's almost as good. And now you're going to have it say great customer of. And then it would be fine. So this is the less often one. But when I've gone through everything in the addresses, I go, oh, okay, let's see what you got in your store stuff. And I did have one customer that had his contact name was a store owner. And it was like John A. Smith. So we had to remove the A. But you get the idea. Um, we will go through a bunch more of these exercises shortly where, because this is a big deal um, and it will stump your people. So you need your people to watch this part of the webinar and make sure they get this. Um, okay, so we're moving on. Commercial invoices. We've had, there has been some changes in commercial invoices by the carriers. Um, their, their servers have gotten smarter smart servers. Um, basically, they fed some algorithms into those servers. And I can't honestly tell you it's one particular carrier over another. I'm seeing it kind of universal. Um, and it's because countries and even our country is getting more picky about what is sent and you know what things are, how things are described and what have you. So the new rule, and this is a Karen rule. So you know, take that with a grain of salt. But the new rule um, because there's a list of forbidden words that you always have three or more words in every description, three or more, because that list on the left, that list of forbidden words, there's a whole bunch of hidden words um, 
and, and in that scroll part so that we don't know. We don't know what they don't tell us what the forbidden words are. There's no magic list we can find and say, don't use these. These are the words that I do have listed there. And I know that's kind of kind of faint, but those words are absolutely words we've seen cause problems. Um, but there are many, many of them that are flagged by the carrier and you will not get a label because it, it has a vague commodity description is what one of the carriers returns. Some of the carriers just reject the label and you don't know why. Um, so make sure that you have three or more words. This affects all carriers. This is not just USPS, this is all carriers, but I had the opportunity to share this information uh, in today's webinar, so I wanted to. Let's give you some examples uh, on that. This is how we used to be able to fill out customs form. We used to be able to be very lazy. Um, we always selected USA, I call it USA for short. We always select USA for country of manufacture and then a short description. That's not gonna fly anymore. You gotta have a real co country of manufacture or at least your best guess. And you need to describe every line with at least three words, okay? Using the word new really often is a good thing. So any kind of textile item like clothing, bedding, um, that type of thing, new, it needs to be with it because used textiles are rejected in more than 50% of the countries throughout the world. So anytime there's new, anything that deals with food, like used or cooking or something, or with a textile, um, new is a good, good, good word to use. And it takes up one of those three words. And it just gets, what, what we're trying to do is get past that algorithm. And so, um, Three words seems to be the magic. Okay. Uh, next and last thing before we get on to the other exercises is lithium battery changes. So there is a new rule. This is USPS only, but it's really a freaky big deal, guys. Um, all mail with lithium batteries, new or used, damaged or perfectly new, must be marked restricted electronic device. If you want to take a pic and tra surface transportation only, if you want to take a picture of this, um, you can. Um, now I will tell you that there is some conflicting rules or information, not rules, but information we're being fed. What we're being told is the new rule has been amended. So this was the best information I could get as of yesterday but I anticipate it'll be a few months before this is all ironed out. Let me explain what happened. Uh, what, let me explain what normally happens and then I'll explain what happened. When there's rule changes with the post office, the post office makes a, a proposal for a, a rule change and it goes through a committee. And once that committee is done, it's published and sent to the public for feedback. There's a 30 day period or a 60 day period for feedback to come in. Then there's a reevaluation, including that feedback, and then a decision is made on whether or not to adopt that role, rule. Um, that did not occur for this rule. This is one of the very few times that did not occur. This was an emergency condition, an emergency rule. The rule was designed and enacted within days. This has been in effect since June 6th is when it went to effect. But since then, they have amended it at least twice. Um, and it's very hard to find the most recent version of it. So I'm going to tell you what I know now, but I'm I'm also going to tell you, hey, as of this morning, I could be wrong. <laughs> it could have changed again. And I anticipate they are still getting feedback. So what they did was they said, here's the new rule. Now we're opening it up for feedback. And based on that feedback, they have made some changes um, and they will make some more changes. So just so you know. So this is not the only part of the rule. So hang on to your hat. It gets interesting. The um, anything with a lithium battery must be in its own container, even if it's brand new. Okay, so if you use typically, we often use um, post office tubs, so it needs to be in its own container. Um, used lithium batteries, which is a, a new designation, used that means it's either pre owned, it can be damaged or not damaged, it can be in defective equipment or not, but it's used can only be mailed via par ground, like parcels like ground. This is, includes when the battery is installed in the cell phone, laptop, or whatever, okay? In the past, that hasn't been true. We've been allowed to send air things as long as the, the battery is installed. 
Uh, if it was a separate battery, we knew that it had to have different rules. Well, that's not true anymore. Um, now it can only be sent ground, which right now that would be probably parcel select ground, another good reason to have that service. But clearly parcel select ground only goes in the United States is only a domestic service. It also goes to, um, I want to say it goes to Alaska, Hawaii. I'm guessing they send it on a boat to Hawaii. So used lithium batteries, what about international mailing? Well, it is prohibited in inbound and outbound international mail. Now this is where it gets interesting. So some of the rules, I've seen some other things saying, oh no, we're it's not prohibited. But right now I did find recent writing that says it's prohibited. I actually copy and pasted this. This is a USPS rule only. <laughs> I don't care that it flies on a FedEx plane. This is a USPS rule, rule only, not if not a FedEx or um, UPS plane uh, rule. Okay. Now, what about mailing to a military APO, FPO, DPO? Um, prohibited in inbound and outbound military mail. Mm, except this is one of the things that got changed. So the military mail came in and said, look, you can send it ground to the port, but then we'll take ownership and responsibility for it. So the, the uh, military MPSA, Military Postal Service Agency, I think that's what it's called, um, has this new rule. This could be amended. So, but right now, as long as it's properly installed in the equipment it's operating in, it can be sent. And this is really important. And I'll tell you why. And this is why the military had a tissy fit about this is soldiers wonderful and doing a great job. And he's fighting in wherever Middle East or wherever he's at. And he's putting his life on the line and his, he, he drops his phone and it gets, it, it breaks. And now he can't call home and can't call mom anymore. So mom goes to the AT&T store, gets him a new phone and sends it to him, right? They open up, the, they may open up the phone to program it or whatever or not. But anyways, with the previous rule, you couldn't send it to him. So the military says, no, 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 no. You're not doing that to our soldiers. Um, we'll, we'll take this. And so they took care of their, their, their men and women. So I'm really, really appreciative to that. Um, okay. Things that you might not think of. Lithium batteries are in freaking everything. Um, honest to goodness, the next time I get out a, a roast chicken from Costco, it's going to have a lithium battery in it. Everything has a battery. So it's don't think just laptops and cell phones and cameras. It's lots of stuff. Um, so please be aware of that. Even hearing aids, uh, just so much stuff. Okay. Um, we're going to have some final addressing exercises, and then we're going to do some Q&A, and we've had a lot of comments. I'll try to go through those. It's hard to scroll through all the, all the Q&A, but um, let's do these addressing exercises, and this is an important area for your staff. So if you rewatch the webinar and you want them especially to watch this part, make sure that you tell them pay attention to the end before the questions, okay? So this addressing ship two rule, um, here's where we have that Lieutenant Colonel P. Smith. That P is not going to fly. You will not get a label with this. Um, here's another one, DJ's bed and bath. And I actually pulled this from my, my database <laughs> and my, whoever put this in, put a space between D and J. That's their two individual letters. That's never going to fly. Um, here's another one, um, QVC. So this was similar to one we had before with the RMA with a blank there. Okay. Um, Chuck and Lila Smith, this will not get a label. Yeah, <laughs> gonna have to watch those ampersands, that and the and sign, the ampersand. Um, we all have those in our in our database, lots and lots of them. So that's gonna be a problem now. Uh, clearly, this is an easy one, that single P there. But it can be the customer too. We have, I know on my database from my store days, I have a lot of them where I just put, especially for Christmas, Smith family, right? You don't even have a first name. That won't fly anymore. Um, so you're gonna have to put in the Smith family or great Smith family or happy Smith family, but you gotta put something there. Um, this is one. We don't typically use that prefix very often, but sometimes we do. We do. Um, so doctor, some cultures in our world, um, I, I won't pick on any particular one, but are more respectful and they still use heavily 
the Mr. Mrs. Doctor, whatever. And so their stores have more of these prefixes. If there's a prefix without a first name, I know sometimes we get a support call from somebody of a certain culture that says, you know, call back Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. And of course, we're used to calling each other first name because we think of you as family, but you know, we'll, we'll abide by what you want. Um, but that, you know, if you do that in your store also, um, that's going to be a problem. You can't have that looking like that. Um, and and the, here's the problem is you often don't know what their first name is. I don't know what Dr. Lee's first name is. It's Dr. Lee. Um, take the doctor out of the, the prefix and put it in as the first name then. Okay, so this is the web, end of the webinar. We are going to go to questions. Um, I will, 